going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So, the finals for the 2024 Arnold Classic South America just wrapped up. And it was exactly what we predicted at prejudging. The exact top three. Raphael ended up winning. Tonio Burton ended up in second place. And Good Vito wound up in third place. So, I'm not too surprised with the result based on how they moved these guys around at the prejudging. They had Raphael in the middle for the first callout. They had Raphael in the middle for the top three callout. And they had Tonio in the middle briefly at the end of that top three callout. So that's pretty much what they showed us at prejudging with the way they moved them. But I have to say, this was probably one of the weirdest finals judgings that I've ever seen. I honestly can't think of another time that I've seen this. And I've been covering bodybuilding shows for like over a decade on this channel. If you guys can think of one, let me know. So what was weird about this was instead of doing one final call-out of the top three, they did three call-outs of two for the top three, which to me doesn't make any sense because you would achieve the exact same thing by just having one call-out of three and moving the guys around, which is typically what they do at shows like this, or just have a call-out of the top two if the top two is clear. Now, I'm guessing the reason they did this was that they were uncertain the order of second and third, which again would still be solved by just one call out of three. So they did a call out first of just good veto Antonio Burton. So you could tell listening to it that it seemed like the crowd thought, well, maybe the show is between good veto and Antonio because typically they don't do a top two call out for the top three unless the winner is in that call out. And I do think that in this call-out, Tonio clearly looked like he was better than Vito. He was sharper, he was more complete, more proportional. And I think that, you know, that was a pretty definitive call-out. But then they did a call-out of Raphael in good Vito, which then didn't make any sense to me. Because I thought looking at the call-out of Tonio and Vito, Tonio had clearly won that call-out, which he did because he placed second. So then they did so they did Raphael and Vito, which to me didn't make any sense. Again, why not just do the top three in one call out and have them all compared at the same time? And I will say that I think Raphael looked better at finals than he did at prejudging. He looked like he tightened up, especially from the back. Um, the glutes and hamstring looked a little bit drier, a little bit more dialed in. And good Vito, to me, honestly, by the end of finals, looked like he was really starting to fade. And I thought in this call out, clearly Raphael. So then they did another call out of Raphael versus Tonio, which is just, it just seems super odd to me. And if I don't really ever buy into bodybuilding conspiracies very often, I thought that Raphael after prejudging, it clearly looked like they had him winning. And I saw a lot of comments after that, um, on Instagram, on YouTube, people were very torn on this one. So I'm sure this is going to be a controversial res result with Good Vito third, Tonio in second, Raphael in first. I saw a lot of people saying they thought Good Vito should win. I saw a lot of people saying they thought Tonio should win. And then I saw a lot of people saying that if Raphael wins, it's rigged just because he's from Brazil and this is a competition in Brazil. And like I said, I tend not to buy into those conspiracies very often. But if you are someone that buys into a conspiracy like that, and I'm not saying I do, I think these callouts are going to further fuel that conspiracy because the more I was thinking about it, what the only reason why you wouldn't do one callout of just all three guys instead of three callouts separating them into twos like that, well, I guess I shouldn't say the only reason, but I think the person that it benefits the most by structuring the callouts that way is Raphael because it gave Raphael a break. Because the other two guys that he was being compared against, each of them had to be in all three of those callouts. Raphael only had to be in two. So it gave him a break during finals. Whereas if they did a callout of just the three of them for that final callout, they would all be posing for the same amount of time. And I'm not saying that I think it was rigged. I think that Raphael actually did deserve to win. But I did read a lot of comments saying they didn't think Raphael deserved to win because he was softer. He definitely was softer than the Ohio. He was softer. You know, honestly, 
I think that Tonio and Vito were sharper. But I think Raphael, because even though he was a little bit off, Raphael was, I think, so much bigger than Tonio and then so much more balanced than Vito. I think that's what gave him the victory. I mean, if you think about a comparison like Hadi Chupin versus Derek Lunsford at the Olympia last year, Hadi, I would argue, was way more conditioned than Derek, but Derek beat him in a couple poses. Like the back poses, I think, is where Derek really took that lead. So conditioning isn't everything. You have guys with better shape sometimes beat guys with better conditioning and vice versa. So that's kind of what I think of when I look at this. Is like, yes, good Vito was more conditioned than Raphael, but his physique was imbalanced. And maybe Tonio Burton was more conditioned than Raphael, but Raphael was significantly bigger and not just taller, more muscular. So it's kind of a toss-up, and I can definitely see where the fans are coming from. And I'm sure when I post this video, and I'm sure once people start to see the results, it's definitely going to be a controversial call because I saw after prejudging a lot of people saying, actually more, I'd say the majority of people saying they didn't think that Raphael should win. And that's why I wanted to point out the the weirdness of the finals callouts because to me it didn't really make much sense, and I think it was maybe a bad move because I think it's going to make people question the results even more. Cause again, if you guys can think of another example of this from any other show, let me know. Like, obviously you're going to have shows where there's a one and two call out and then maybe a call out of another two guys. That's three and four, but I've never seen the top three compared like this before in three separate call outs of two. And I'm trying to rack my brain thinking of what would the point of that be compared to just doing one call out of the three and the only thing I could really think of is it would give Raphael a little bit of a break and it would give him an advantage. I don't know. To be honest, I'm I'm not surprised with these results. This is what I expected. This is what I predicted. And I, I do actually think Raphael deserved to win. I don't really buy into the conspiracy here. But I'm very, I will say I'm very, very curious to read the comments after these results are posted, after this video is posted. So make sure you're, you let your opinion be known in the comments below. But I think that's really, if I had to sum it up, that's kind of what it came down to. Vitali looked incredible for his pro debut. Really great showing for him. Uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Really good conditioning. Legs look phenomenal. I think he needs to bring up his upper body, specifically his chest. He really needs to work on that back double bicep. Um, and even the fullness in his shoulders. I mean, Raphael, like I said, to Raphael's credit, for a guy that's constantly been criticized, basically his whole pro career for not being big enough, being too small, going up against a guy that was this Instagram, social media mass monster, Good Vito, he looked significantly bigger than Good Vito in the upper body. Not in the lower body, but in the upper body, because he was so much fuller. His chest, his shoulders, even his arms, to be honest, even in the front double bicep, even though Raphael doesn't have... I would say better peaks to his biceps than uh, Vito has. His arms overall, to me, actually looked bigger than good Vito's. So it is kind of a testament to the level of improvement that Raphael has really made. And I think it's just kind of, you know, with good Vito, he's a really young guy. This is his first pro show ever, pro debut. He's got plenty of time to work on these things. And if he does, if he catches up that upper body, the chest, the shoulders, to those crazy legs of his, he's going to be very dangerous. And this kind of reminds me of Nexzilla. Nexzilla's pro debut, he was top three with two really good bodybuilders, um, Samson and Crizo. Horse MD, same thing. Top three at his pro debut. And now we have Good Vito, top three at his. And I really do think that this does position Raphael as a first call-out top guy at the Olympia this year. He just beat Tony O'Burton, who was eighth at the Olympia. And he just beat Good Vito, who's an absolute freak. So you've got to make the argument that, on paper, this would put him in the first call out at the Olympia. And frankly, I think Raphael is better than Crizo, and Crizo was seventh at the Olympia. So I think this does put Raphael in that top six conversation, where previously his best Olympia placing was tenth. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I know this is going to be an interesting conversation to be had, but that's what makes bodybuilding exciting. Everybody has a different opinion, and that's what makes it fun. It's a subjective sport, and that's why commentary is so fun. I'm sure a lot of you guys will disagree with me. I'm sure I will disagree with a lot of you guys, and that's what makes the conversation around bodybuilding so much fun. 
So make sure you like the video, comment down below, click the bell notification icon. And as always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.